hey what's up guys welcome to the channel again uh, so today we will be looking into different aspects of mathematics mathematical concepts that are being asked in the coding interviews okay uh, these will be basically related to all the stuffs that are getting asked or you have seen different questions that are related to some of the mathematical calculations that happens inside uh, the programming uh, languages okay so as you know that uh, there are basically uh, three or four important categories that comes in when it comes to um, uh, mathematical concepts or in in terms of coding interviews the fun one important thing around it is the bits the bit manipulation that happens inside the memory okay so whenever you type a integer or whenever we type anything actually the things get manipulated in bytes inside the computer memory but we will be taking care of the problems uh, that are specifically uh, asked around these concepts okay so we'll be starting with uh, bit manipulation or uh, looking into what bits are okay uh, why bits are so important in inside the programming and why basically we care about um, uh, looking into these uh, these concepts okay so these are uh, the there will be a lot of things that will be covered in this particular session so hope um, this will give you a very very uh, uh, good idea around uh, what things are uh, to be expected and you will be able to solve all of them if you, you know, just um, uh, mix and match all these concepts what I will be going through in this particular session. So this uh, this session will be basically uh, a bit of uh, calculation intensive. Uh, you will not need to do much calculation but basically you will need to manipulate numbers you will need to think in terms of bits and all so that's uh, that's going to be covered in this particular session okay so let's start so uh, when we uh, started with early mathematics right when in our school days we were taught about binary and decimal notation so what basically they are so when we say uh, uh, a decimal notation okay so the number what we see one two three four five six seven eight and all so these are basically the decimal representation of a number okay and uh, when we say that uh, we wanted to we wanted to convert it to, into a binary number so binary number is nothing but a representation in forms of zero and one okay so whenever you represent something in forms of only zero and one that is called binary number okay so uh, you can see here uh, 11001 is basically a binary representation of number 25 okay don't worry about the things what you see on the screen i will just tell you how to derive a decimal to binary or a binary to decimal conversion okay based on uh, some some paradigms we have uh, but basically you understand that uh, when i say base 10 it means the normal number what we refer to so 1 2 3 4 5 6 all these are numbers uh, uh, are known as uh, base 10 numbers or the decimal numbers and the number if I convert that into a representation of 0 and 1 that will be called as binary number okay so uh, coming down to the coming down to the example you see on the screen right so if it's very much uh, like it, it may be counterintuitive once but once you understand how this thing works it, it's, it's quite easy like uh, whenever we say base so basically we mean that it's a multiplicative fact uh, th the common multiplicative factor around all of the numbers is basically 2 okay so basically we raise the power we raise to the power of 2 okay start from 0 and raise to the power uh, of 2 uh, incrementally and once we do all of them and we append we, when we add all of them what the resultant is going to be this will give you the base 10 or the decimal representation of a binary number so say you are given a binary number whatever number is 110001 uh, you start from the least significant digit so this this one is the least significant digit and you do a, a, a basically a multiplication of uh, of 2 raised to the power 0 then 2 raised to the power 1 2 and so on and so forth and at the end you will just add up all the result and this will give you uh, the base 10 or the decimal representation of that particular number so this is uh, like very uh, uh, very much easy to convert so once you get familiar with all of these you will be very easily able to convert how however the big number is you will be just it will be very easy to convert a particular binary number to its decimal or base 10 representation okay 
similarly if you want to convert from decimal to binary okay so this this requires a bit of division okay so uh, see we i we want to convert this number 78 to a uh, binary representation so what we do in this particular case we divide it by 2 and keep on writing the quotient what we get uh, on the right hand side so you can see the quotient as zero here right and whatever the uh, uh, whatever the course whatever the modular is you will just write down below and keep on dividing okay and keep on dividing all of them so this is the quotient okay and this is the remainder what is being thrown okay uh, remainder that we get out of it so when we divide 78 by 2 we get a quotient of 39 and write the remainder here so sorry i i i just said it it's the quotient but this is this is all the remainders what we get by consecutive divisions so it's it's quite obvious right when you divide some some even number with 2 okay uh, that that gets converted to um, uh, a, a zero part uh, a zero uh, remainder and if it is an odd number it will give you a one so it will only give a uh, remainders as zero and one so it's a property of modulus whatever the number you are going to divide by the modular or the remainder is going to be one less than it so all the numbers from zero to two excluding two will be the remainders so you do this all consecutive uh, consecutive uh, divisions one by one and at the end just there is a trick that you will go from down to up okay so whatever the last remainder was uh, you will take that and basically go in the upward direction and that will give you the binary representation of a decimal number right uh, so that's uh, that's pretty uh, pretty much it from converting from decimal to binary uh, now uh, when you know that they, the the uh, when you, now you understand that uh, these are only the two uh, two types of uh, digits what we'll be dealing with when we talk of binary numbers and when we talk in terms of computer language everything happens in terms of uh, binary bits okay zero and one so everything gets converted to a binary equivalent and then operators operate on them and they give us the result so there are some basic operators which you will need to familiar if you are uh, from electronics background or if you understand logic gates you must be very familiar with these but if you are not uh, there is not, nothing to worry so these are the only few logic gates which we are most concerned about so one is the and okay you can see x and y these are the permutations and combinations of 0 and 1 what can po what can be possible okay and this basically you can see the logic gates of and or zor and negation okay what the results are what exactly the results are going to be when you do this particular um, uh, these particular operations on on these binary bits so it's it's pretty obvious right uh, when the digits are same okay and will give you a zero if they are different they will give you again if 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 any one of them is zero it will give you a zero and if both of them are one it's it's going to be giving you one similar is the case of or so you just need to remember in turn in case of or and uh, um, zor so this is or x x uh, single line y is or and x um, x caret y is basically zor so you just need to remember that everything is same it is just that uh, when you do uh, two similar bits manipulation with Zord, they give you a zero. So this is a very important trick that will be useful in solving many problems. Um, uh, like uh, whenever you do a, a Zord with a common number, uh, a Zord with a two common number, it will always give you a zero. So basically it will cancel out. So this is a very important property. We will be seeing some problems uh, in, 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 the, in the coming parts of the session. And similarly, the negation. So it's just zero gets converted to one, zero gets converted to one, and then one gets converted to zero, one gets converted to zero, and so on and so forth. So this is basically the truth table of uh, the operators, okay, um, uh, which, which, which is very important, okay. You should basically take a screenshot of it and, and uh, play with it around for some time and this will give you a good hang of uh, what, what exactly the truth tables of different operators are. And we'll be solving a number of problems uh, using these operators, okay. So you will be just seeing how powerful these, um, these, uh, these um, logical operators can be. And you can solve uh, n number of computational problems, computational heavy problems with some uh, minor um, operators uh, using the bits. Okay. 
okay so so a very simple example okay so you it's it's like uh, uh, we will be going in depth about all of them okay but just to give you some example i have taken a uh, few examples what 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 things look like when we when we apply operators on real numbers okay so say i have a value of a, in in a value of a we have a uh, 5 okay and uh, in value of um, b we have 2 okay so when we do and we just saw the uh, truth table right so uh, whenever we do a and uh, it will be basically doing the multiplication okay if you understand in very naive terms it's basically multiplication and is multiplication or is basically addition and or is a special type of addition okay and uh, negation is what you know right it's it's just inverse of what you get on so all the bits will be getting reversed so it will be very easy to understand in that particular uh, the trick way okay what i told you so 1 0 multiply 0 0 1 multiply 0 1 0 multiply 0 so everything will become zero right a and b similarly a or b you just need to do the addition and it will give you um, the a uh, a or b similarly a or b okay uh, you can see the truth table here again and just do the mathematics that is required here to calculate a or b similarly a negation b uh then there are two special operators okay one is called the right shift and one is called the left shift so this is the right shift operator so when we say 5 or uh, 2 uh, greater than symbols and 2 so ba this basically uh, uh no moves this particular so take 5 and move 1 to 2 right hand side places so these two will get 0 0 and this one will get at to end right and this will be looking like um it this will get converted to one similar is the case of left shift operator the the last bit last significant bit will be pushed on uh, left to two bits and this will get converted to something like 20 okay this is the this is the um binary equivalent of 20 so 5 uh, double shift to just gives you 20 okay um uh, so this is basically a very very um, basic examples of of all the logical operators what we have okay and bitwise operators what we see um and let's see some example okay so let's see a very uh, very basic java example so here we have a is equal to 4 b is equal to 6 so to convert something to a binary string there is a method inside the integer or integer class so you can just go ahead and see the integer class and this will basically give you a, a binary representation of a number so you can see on the right screen on the right hand side right when you do a, a binary conversion of 4 it gives you 100 it gives you uh, when you convert that uh, convert 6 to binary it gives you 110 and then you are doing a or b and a or b if you do that so just do it here okay 00 10 and 110 so it will give you 6 right so this gets converted to 6 so this is what get it it gets printed over the screen right so uh, similar is the case of uh, the right shift and the left shift which i told you okay so left shift shifts the uh, shifts the bit to the left uh, left side and right shift shifts the value to the right hand side okay so this is the visual representation okay so uh, just we will pushing the value that much of bits uh, how much the uh, amount is given uh, with the greater than symbol or the less than symbol so if you have to shift one you will be just shifting this particular one to the left place and the uh, uh, if you are shifting it left you will be replacing it by zero similar is the case of right shift so when you shift on the right the uh, the significant bits on the left gets converted to zero okay so this is basically the right shift and the left shift so there is a very very important trick that is uh, that would be very good to remember so whenever we do a right shift uh, by n okay so a right shift by 1 so just replace 1 by 1 uh, here so a by 2 so it's it will get divided by 2 okay uh, so it's a very generic formula which i have derived and this helps you solve a lot of problems when you delve in deep with uh, with with the, with these right shift and left shift operators so whenever you are right shifting by n it's basically a by 2 to the power n and that is the floor of it and whenever you are left shifting a value by n it's basically multiplying by 2 to the power n okay so this is a common paradigm which is basically uh, uh, which which basically we need to remember uh, when we solve some tricky problems 
so uh, there is one another app operator that is called modulo operator so that is basically uh, finding the division okay uh, so uh, when we divide some some uh, dividend by a divisor it gives you a quotient right and when you do use a modular operator it gives you the remainder so 13 modular 6 that is whenever you divide 13 by 6 2 is the dividend uh, 2 is the uh, quotient and 1 is the remainder right so you need to just familiar with a uh, modular operator which will be going to use in in, in the coming uh, coming parts of the session so there, there is a very tricky question uh, uh, you can solve it with bits uh, why uh, why we need to solve something with the help of bits uh, why cannot we solve it with gen, uh, general programming paradigm so the answer lies is uh, uh, answer lies in the fact that uh, whenever you do manipulations in bits, uh, the processing is very, very much faster. It's very much uh, native to the operating system and the computations are very, very quick and uh, they happen in no time. So that's why we prefer if you have any solutions of algorithms that that can solve with the help of bits, go for it. Like it will be very, very much faster. OK, and they do it with constant time okay because they generally use and or and these type of formulas and they are like uh, supreme or e extremely fast to be honest okay so just see that how we can derive and uh, whether number is odd or even uh, with the with the binary operator uh, uh, bitwise operator so basically uh, if you see logical operator and and if you do any odd number um, uh, and with uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, so which is equivalent of 1 so you if you do a, any uh, if you do a and of any number with 1 it will give you a result as 1 okay because the least significant digit will be 1 and when you do something and 1 it will give you a 1 again okay similar is the case of even number we know that the last uh, significant digit of an even number is going to be 0 and whenever we are going to do an and of that particular thing that will give us uh, no, that will give us a result that is will be equal to zero. So we can easily identify with the help of bits which number is odd or which number is even. You just need to do an and with zero 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 one or one, and the result if it is a one then it is an odd, and if it is a zero it will be is an even number. So there is um, another uh, very important question that keeps on. Uh, keeps on asked again and again and that is around uh, calculating the trailing zeros um, inside a factorial okay uh, calculating uh, trailing zeros inside a factorial so when we do a multiplication right when we do a factorial calculation it's like 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there is going to be number of zeros that are going to be appended inside the factorial okay and there is a theorem to derive the number of zeros it's basically uh, logically speaking of uh, when uh, when zeros will come right so zeros will come only when you have a two or five multiplication right so whenever you multiply two by five you get one zero and zero is uh, the trailing one right so that's how you can get the trick or uh, how many you just need to count the number of twos which will be like more than the number of fives so if you are able to count the number of uh, two and fives uh, basically you will be getting the number of zeros at the end but the trick is uh, like if you even if you get all the fives um, how will you calculate the number of zeros for the, because even 25 ones will uh, twent, uh, multiplications of 25 uh, with 2 or 4 will give you zeros right so you need to just uh, count all of them again uh, so if you if you uh, understand what i mean so basically uh, the theorem of calculating the trailing zeros says that you just need to take the number of which you need to calculate factorial up to uh, like uh, in which you have to calculate the number of zeros divide it by 5 take the modular um, the, take the flow and then uh, 5 square 5 cube and so on and so forth in this way what you are doing is you are also calculating 5 okay number of 5s that are there number of 25s that are there number of uh, 125s that are there and finally when you do all the summation this will give you uh, the number of zeros at the end of a factorial right so the code is very very simple okay uh, as you can see in the theorem here right um, the code is like here so you just need to run a loop from 5 and it will go up to uh, it will keep on multiplying like 5 25 125 so on and so forth and you will just need to basically uh, get all the uh, factors of 
five uh, in that particular number and keep on adding to a variable and that will give at the end that will give you the trading zeros what you are going to have in the factorial of a number so let's move on to some uh, some other other type of a question so find non repeating element so if you need to find non repeating element in a particular array so so you suppose you are given an array and inside that particular array every number is repeating twice every number is uh, like uh, having more than once uh, one occurrence and only one number is there that has uh, not got um, uh, that has not repeated twice okay so how will you solve this problem there can be a number of solutions you can take uh, you can create a mapping structure you can create a hash map hash set or you can do with other manipulations as well you can solve this with n number of things but here we will be solving this with the help of bit operators okay so what the concept is as i told you in the zor thing that whenever you do a zor with two numbers okay they cancel out if they are same okay they cancel out if they are same and they don't do anything when they are different okay we will take this benefit and if i take that array okay and you can see at line number 11 i am just just doing a zor repeatedly with the all the loops uh, all the members of the array and at the end we will be left up with the only element that is non repeated which is 4 right pretty 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 simple and pretty pretty fast okay uh, so this is a good tricky question okay now let's look into another tricky question which is to swap two numbers using zwap uh, using zor okay so zor operator with the zor operator you can swap the numbers as well just see the example okay you can see i have taken x as 4 and y as 8 okay you can see the binary representations below and then x or y so this is uh, the x the above row and the below row is uh, y we have done x or y is once and it gives us a number and we have done x or y again okay uh, and x or y again so if you do three times um, uh, if you do x or y three times you will just see uh in the example uh on the your screen that basically the number has got swapped so it's quite tricky right if we use um the temp variables to swap we use some manipulations to swap but only doing zor three times with the same numbers it has just given us a number that is in the swapped form okay and and the code is even more simple okay you can see the code on your screen okay i have taken a as 10 b as 6 and i have taken uh, i have done a is or b and stored in a and then a is or b again stored in b and then in a again i have replaced the a is or b so the intermediate result you need to um, uh, you just need to observe how this result comes but just remember that uh, whenever you are doing zor three times of two numbers they get swapped okay uh then this is a tricky question i have uh, got this question in in one of the product based companies uh, how can you calculate a square root uh, without without using math function okay there is a math function right math dot square root through which you can calculate the maths uh, math square root but you don't need to use that you have to calculate or derive a logic in which you can basically calculate a square root without the math function and then the logic is very simple like you need to just take uh you just need to divide uh you just need to use the division uh, formula okay the division formula of uh, square root okay so just take the number divided by 2 and store that in the square root and keep on doing that until you reach on uh, reach reach on to the condition uh that the temp minus sr is not equal to 0 and finally when you end up do, uh, doing this uh, do do while loop you will just get the square root of the number uh there is another uh very tricky question that gets asked again and again and in that is the prime number so prime number is a very basic program right uh so there will be a implementation of prime number which we will be seeing in just a matter of time but just to understand just to give you an uh, uh, idea about prime number prime number is a number which has no factors uh which has no uh, factors like 1 2 and so on so if an if any number has got no factors till n Uh, that number is basically a prime number so uh, so basically you just need to go to the square root because after square root the number will exceed and you just you don't need to calculate the factor again so if there is a number say 15 okay you just need to calculate the 15 square root that is approximately 3 okay and you just need to take check the factor if it has a factor of 1 2 or 3 if it has a factor of either of uh, either of these three 
it's it's uh, not a prime number and if it ha if it doesn't have any factor in the square root of n it's it's basically a prime number so this is a very basic uh, factorial uh, this is a very basic prime number program but there is a uh, a problem that that comes in uh, with 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 uh, when you need to calculate a prime number for a longer uh, longer bound right okay so say i am giving you a number uh, of uh, 1 million okay and you need to calculate all the prime numbers till 1 million so they, this particular approach may take and exhaust some of your memory because you are doing some computations right you are doing divisions repeated divisions of each of the loops uh, rather than doing that uh, uh, there is a uh, theorem you can say there is an approach which we call as eve of error eratosthenes okay and that particular theorem states that uh, if you need to derive prime numbers till a particular number so here i have taken an example as 50 you just need to traverse through the square root of that number across that particular region and at the end of it only the prime numbers will be remaining okay and this this works pretty well okay i will just uh, show you a simple example to to make that thing very clear so you can see on the screen like it starts from uh, uh, all the numbers okay of course one is not a prime number so i have excluded that so you can see on the screen that this particular grid right so all the number till 50 in the first iteration okay it takes two uh, and on uh, blacks out all the two 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 multiples okay multiples of two are gone okay similarly is the case when we mark uh, all the three multiples again okay all the three multiples will go by and uh, Similarly, you uh, exclude everything till the square root of n and at the end you will see that you are left with only the prime numbers. Okay, you just just need to repeat it till the square root of uh, of a number and basically at the uh, at, at that particular stage when you reach on to that you will be left with only prime numbers uh, on, on, on your screen. Okay, so I have taken only four exam uh, four iterations, but this will go. Okay, so the code for that is also pretty simple okay you can see the main logic is i have taken a boolean array right and from that boolean array i am just trying to first populate everything with true okay and whenever i am i am iterating through uh, till the math dot square root of num of course and i am changing the value of that particular boolean value okay and i am changing the value of boolean to false if, if that is a uh, if that is not a prime number right so after the iterations uh, all the numbers till n you will be able to mark as a uh, uh, mark as uh, prime or not prime you will be able to guess uh, actually what what are uh, who which numbers are prime and which are not okay so these are where it uh, guys uh, so the, i i hope uh, you got a gist of all the problems that are getting asked in the interviews and and these these are like very very important questions if you don't know the trick it will be very difficult for you to do, uh, get get solution in runtime or uh, program them code them okay so just go through them and uh, practice them a bit and it will be like you will be able to solve all the mathematical related queries till then uh, see you in the next session okay take care bye bye